What's up, everybody? I'm Josh. I'm Grant. We are Peel and Drag Extreme Fishing. Thanks for checking us out. We're uh, we're based out of Richmond, Virginia. This is Peel and Drag Podcast Number One. Numero uno. We're going to be using these podcasts as a way to keep everybody uh, in the loop as to what we're doing, uh, the fish we're targeting, the goals at hand. Basically, uh, we're going to use it. Try to show you a little bit of the gear we're using for each upcoming species along with uh, a little bit of background on how we fish for the sp certain species and and uh, just kind of give you a little insight about how we're doing this but uh, we both a piece been fishing kayak fishing for about uh, five four, years four yeah, or five years four years five years both been filming for three we got these polar vortexes coming through kind of shutting down the fishing around here so we've been talking about ramping up this website for about two years now finally got a little bit of time off the water to do it so uh that's the only reason we're not fishing right now it's yeah. freaking snow yeah so we're coming at you uh, first blog post might be a little bumpy but we'll get through it first podcast might be a little bumpy we'll get through it but basically we're gonna be using these keep you guys in the loop um we have a facebook we have a twitter uh, we have our website, www.fishhardorstayhome.com. Um, I'll include all the links for all these things. We have a YouTube channel, Peel and Drag Fishing TV. Um, we'll put all our videos on there. Um, we're working on Instagram. We may or may not get that. Basically, um, we're going to be real active on the social media. It'll all be updated yeah. daily, and Twitter will be updated all the time, especially while we're fishing. We'll have it update constantly. Yeah, we'll be shooting so, out some tweets of the fish we catch. I'll be posting stuff on Facebook. We'll keep the site updated. But uh, basically, um, we're trying to become the first Virginia kayak anglers to catch all 25 Virginia game species, all uh, all citation class fish. We're going to try to videotape all of our, our trips out there and, and kind of put together respectable respectable website for you guys to enjoy what we're doing um, we're, we're trophy hunters we like going after the biggest of each species so it should be fun um we hope to be the place you can go to get your information for whatever species you're looking for around virginia and fresh or salt water we're hoping we're going to get it covered yeah so. we also uh we fish the local kayak fishing tournaments um some yak attack tka uh we got one coming up soon, the MS Shad Shootout. That's going to be on the James April 12th. If you guys think you're a good shad fisherman, uh, want to support a good cause, come out. Um, it's 20 bucks to enter. Good stuff. Fish against us. Yeah, so it should be fun. We like to have a good time. But also, um, we also chased down some IGFA line class records. I tied the 8-pound test shad record last year. Um, Grant came close with a couple different ones. He fly fishes mostly for him, and really fly fishing is the way to go when you're talking about shad and stuff. But uh, I'm going to be personally trying some two-pound test uh, line class records along with some other things. But basically, do the IGFA line class stuff, uh, trophy fishing, the tournaments, kind of do a little bit of everything. But uh, we like catching big fish. We hope you guys enjoy what we're doing, and uh, you know we're, we're fun-loving guys. We like to have a good time. Both pretty clumsy, so you probably get a couple laughs out of either one of us at Too our clumsy. at our expense. But we're okay with that. So next next fish we got planned, or you know whenever the weather's gonna let us, hopefully gonna get something done this weekend. Is yellow perch. It's you know tomorrow's February first, so it's that time of year. We're gonna get out there. We're fishing the Mapanai and King William. And this time of year, the perch are stacking up for the spawn. They're headed up the rivers. They're in all the deep corners, all the current breaks, just looking for a break, looking for somewhere they can rest because they've been spawning up from West Point and all the brackish water. And really, it's not a whole lot to the fishing. I mean, there's not anything real difficult. So yeah, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll, you'll have, know how to handle it. Have a good it. understanding. Basically, you're just finding the fish. They'll hit just about anything. Um, Mattapanai is really windy. It's got a very narrow channel, and overall, it's not all that deep. So the fish like to get in the deep corners and the cuts and stack up. They stage up there. 
they pair up. A lot of these fish are as big as your forearm. I mean, the chance for fatter than they are long. I mean, no, yeah, chan- ten inch girth on a eight inch fish, just yeah. stupid looking. Chance for a weight citation is definitely there if you have a certified scale or if you want to keep them. Length citation got to really weed through some fish, but we only caught one last year that was. And it was a quarter inch short, I think. I mean, it could have been, it could have gone for a length citation. If we would have had a certified scale, we each had yeah. a dozen or so yeah, citations it, last year. Easy. It so. got pretty wild. But uh, basically, as far as uh, big fish aspect, it's not there with the perch, but it's a good way to catch a lot of fish and break you out of your winter, winter doldrums. I know around here, a lot of guys aren't fishing. The James has been froze up a lot. Um, some guys are going out for blue cats but <laughs> having to dodge icebergs. So this is a good way it's to get out and catch a lot of fish. Good way to get your name on a citation to get your foot in the door. Yeah, so. if you're about that, it's a good way to get that paper. It's it's good stuff. But basically we're going to do a quick run through of the lures we're using, the lure selection, and then uh, we'll talk about line and, and that sort of thing. But uh, So... A couple of our methods. The first method we like to use is uh, vertical jigging. Like I said earlier, these fish are really stacked up in the corners. I mean stacked up. When you go over them with a depth finder, you'll mark just a tower of fish, just a pod. And we like to use vertical jigs for them. This one in particular, it's a Johnson Thin Fisher. With the smaller hooks, whoops, tends to... They all tend to work about the same. We don't tend to have a favorite when it comes to them. Um, this is the XPS jigging blade. Also gold. And gold seems to be the little bit better color over top of silver. Mattapanai is pretty murky, so gold seems to put off a, uh, a better color selection for the fish. Anywhere you're fishing murky water, um, whether it's for perch or any species, gold is always going to be a better flash than right. silver. Always. Um, next... You got the Cotton Cordell. Can't really remember the name of this one, but it's just another silver jigging blade. Um, right. Then we've got off-brand, just the, I believe this one is just called a jigging blade. We got them at Surfside Bait and Tackle in uh, Mechanicsville. And the tried and true, older than dirt, the silver buddy. This was definitely the one we caught the most fish on last year. Yep. Don't know why. I mean, it was probably just because that was the one we had the most of because we... Green Top's the only place around here you can buy them, but when we were looking for jigs, they had a whole wall of them, and they were cheap, so right. we grabbed them, and that's the key. Right. Don't spend a lot of money on a vertical jig, especially not if you're fishing the map and I where we're fishing, or if you're fishing around structure. Frankly, the way you fish them, you're just begging to get hung up. Right. You let it hit the bottom once, then you crank it up two or three times and just sit right. there and slowly jig it. If there's a stick, if there's a log, anything down there, you're just begging one of those treble hooks to hook it. So go cheap, light line, light hooks, just because it's not worth spending 10 minutes to get one of these baits out the water. I mean, as you can see, there's nothing to them. Basically, don't buy the $6 one. Buy the one that's $2.53. It's got the weak hooks on it. If you spend more than 4 bucks for these, I'm telling you, you're wasting your money. That's the first one you're going to lose. They all work the exact same. And like you said, if you buy a $10 (laughs) one, you're going to lose it immediately. And you're going to be pissed for the whole rest of the day. That's what's going to happen. It's got a little repressed anger there. Anyway... You're using the cheap ones. Use the cheap hooks. They're just perched. They're not going to bend anything straight. Especially, we're gonna, I like to use two-pound tests, so it, that's a little bit harder to get. you got to buy it on eBay. But that gets the most bang for your buck as far as uh, getting the fight out of the fish. If you are one of those guys who's obsessed with buying the best hooks in the market, the best treble hooks you can buy, you know, round bends, kamikatsu, whatever, just, just sharpen the hooks to come on the bait. Most of these hooks are molded into the baits. I mean, the best baits are the ones that just have the hooks molded right into the body. The split rings, split rings tend to allow the hook too much movement, and it hooks over your bait. The hooks will foul with each other. They'll hook over the line, and they'll it just screws everything up. So, and the silver buddy. What I noticed about it has a little bit better action on the drop. Has a little bit more wobble coming down. So, that's my personal favorite. I like the gold version. It's got a little bit of flash to it. And uh, basically, that's all you're going for is a reaction strike with these fish. They're super aggressive. Um, they're cannibalistic. That's why uh, the next selection, Marabou Jigs, um, I tied this one. I, I personally tied this one. And it's basically just bucktail with some chenille 
a little bit of marabou and some flashaboo. And it's in a yellow perch pattern. Doesn't have the black in there, but it's in a yellow perch pattern. And you know, basically anything small that a perch is going to hit it. I like using the yellow perch pattern because they get really aggressive and territorial at times to smaller fish. So it helps. It helps getting your bigger fish on the hook. Most of the bites we're getting aren't really. Oh, I'm hungry. Let me eat that. They're more of a you're in my way. Get out of my way. Kind right. of hit the same kind of hit that you're getting during shad season. Right. So it's. And speaking of shad, I use this one also. Um, it's basically just a glorified shad fly with a little bit of flash on it. And like I said, it looks like a yellow perch too. Um, we got two here that Grant tied. Um, he can show you those. These are more or less just marabou crappy jigs. Nothing fancy. Um, just some chartreuse estas for the collar and some chartreuse over yellow marabou. That's a color combination that's really underused in all of fishing. I mean, salt water, fresh water, you know, your mountain stream, stuff like that. Chartreuse and yellow gets it done. I've caught more fish on that color combination than I could even think of. Right. And then the only other color I really mess with is tried and true, just red and white. It's just red estas with the white marabou. White. It's been around forever. White's always a good color. Yeah, it gets you, it's kind of like a bait fish color. Um, like I said, they're hitting anything smaller than them. So all this stuff's good. The marabou um, tends to work a little bit better if you vertical jig it or if you kind of slow jig it because the marabou gives you some, uh, it breathes coming through the water. It's about the softest material in all of fishing. I mean, yeah, it's so a little bit on the brittle side, but right. it's got so much action. I mean, if you tie these yourself, you know marabou's cheap and right. you know, if they get tore up, it's not a big deal. Right. And uh, lastly, the third selection of lure that we use third style is basically just your your road runner uh stump jumper that's the uh blakemore brand blakemore yeah and uh basically this is the rubber body silicone body whatever you want to call it um this is a little bit better for casting um it's it's the profile holds better coming through the water it's it's a harder profile as opposed to the marabou and like I said, the marabou kind of breeds a little bit better, so it allows it, to, uh, it's a better bait when you're vertical jigging or slow rolling, just like the marabou jigs, just like your, your mar actual marabou jig, crappy jigs. But it's got a little bit of flash on it, so the it works same, a little bit better. Still, the kind of, I still think the main reason these things are getting bit, though, is that blade. I mean, yeah. the way these baits are designed, yeah, they're meant to be fished and kind of slow rolled on the bottom. I mean, I think Blake Moore's old slogan used to be, if you're not getting bit or if they're not hitting it, reel it slower or something. You can't fish yeah, it too slow. Like you just slow roll them on the bottom. I mean, they're a great bait for all species. And, you know, these you got a chance for any other species out there, too. Yeah, get a lot of bass on them uh, this time of year if you're slow rolling them. But basically, um, these baits are for casting if, if, if you kind of want to, you know, if you're bored with your vertical jig and you want to cast your road runners work well um kind of a hybrid lure with your marabou jigs yeah, your, you can do a little bit of everything with them right Mar cast them vertical jig them whatever you want yeah your marabou jigs you do either one um i would not cast your we got to see what happens when yeah. someone casts one of those would not into the trees <laughs> yeah. would not want to cast this just straight vertical jigging it the most aerodynamic bait in the world I don't care if it only weighs a quarter ounce. If you're stupid enough to try and cast this thing, it will be in a tree. This thing will go for days. I don't care if you use an 80 pound motto. It will just bomb. Anyway, like we said, it doesn't take a lot uh, bait selection wise to catch these fish. Um, if you want to know one bait that's going to work for you, gold a gold silver buddy brand jig and blade is what you want. We usually use, um, what is it, eighth ounce? Uh, eighth, quarter. Quarter ounce. Quarter ounce. Quarter ounce. I was using eighth ounce uh, in a different brand just because the lighter line works a little I bit better. I think we were using the eighth ounce in the XPS blade. Right. I think because most of the other ones, I think the lightest they come is a quarter ounce. Right. I think the, sil the silver buddy that is the smallest it comes is a quarter. Yeah, which that's right. is honestly, it's big time overkill. For how deep we're fishing, but it doesn't matter. Those fish yeah, just we're, tear it up. we're fishing anywhere from I'd say eight to twelve feet. It doesn't get that much deeper. Yeah, it, it might hit sixteen or seventeen a couple places. Doesn't get that much deeper in the turns around here. But like I said, um, if you're in our Richmond surrounding areas, audience, we fish out of Aylet, Virginia. 
Um, not really worried about telling you guys where we fish because there's so many of them. It's like the shad run. I mean, you just yeah. There's if so you fish, you're gonna get bit. Yeah, there's so many of them. There's so much to fish. Uh, if you go there on a weekday, there's nobody there. If you go there on a weekend, there's barely anybody there. So you might see two boats on the weekend. Yeah. I mean. The river is not a very good boat river because if you don't know where you're at, you're going to run that boat up on a flat. Yeah, the channel's very it's, narrow through most of it. So uh, I pity anyone who doesn't have like Navionics chip or something. It's yeah, it's rough. It, uh, it definitely uh, caters def- the kayak yeah, fish. Yeah, ca- caters better. the kayak angler because you can sneak up on these fish that are in these shallower corners without spooking them too much. But uh, basically, this is our lure selection as far as line. Two uh, to six pound mono at the most. Six tops. At, that's overkill. But yeah. I liked six on a medium light last year just because every time I got hung up, I got it back. Um, if you go any heavier than that, jigs and stuff like that, they don't get the right action. Mono floats, so especially something like a vertical jig. I mean, right. if you're using something heavy, it's going to hinder the action. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, if you want to use braid, just stick to 10 pound braid. Don't buy five. Don't buy anything heavier. Just stick 10-pound braid and use it when you want to bass fish later. Yeah, it's overkill for perch, but it's not worth buying 5-pound braid yeah. for two weeks. As far as your rods, it's not very deep. Um, uh, if you're going to buy a rod, any light-action ultralight rod will work. Uh, Don't spend a lot of money. Usually, because these aren't very heavy. But if you're going to buy a rod, um, I suggest something in the shorter length range. Uh, Longest being 6.6. Six. Yeah, I mean, tops. and that's even... I used a 6.6 six last year in my medium light, and I didn't like it. I like using about a 6, and my ultralight's even a 5-foot 6. So Right. I use a 6-foot light, and it uh, gets a lot of good good fight out of the fish. It's not a very big fish, but it gets a lot of good fight out of the perch when you're using 2-pound paired up with a light rod. You get to feel what you got hooked up. So uh, I wouldn't go anything longer than that because you'll probably rip the fish out of the water. And though it is funny, probably not what you want to do. No. But, uh, yeah, that's the line. The rigs, reel, any 1,000, 2,000 series reel will work. Uh, spinning preferably works a little bit better when you're jigging these things. Whatever you can get, like, 100. The gauge I use is if the reel says it takes, like, 110 pounds of, or 110 yards of 6, that's pretty much perfect. I mean, because right. if you put 4, you get, like, 130, 140 yards of 4. And, and they're not going to spoil you. You might hook into a bowfin that'll rip every piece of line off you have. The which only is drag fun. pull that's going to happen is during the hook set on right. a perch. It's just going to be, bzz, and that's it. Right. And that's... even that shouldn't happen unless you're using two, possibly. But um, that's pretty much it. That's that's all we got for perch. Perch is what's coming up next. Um, we'll do one of these uh, probably before the shad run. Shad run's coming up in March. The perch is kind of our pregame. Uh, the precursor to the shad run. The shad video is probably going to be a little bit longer video. going to be a little bit more in depth just because there's a lot of techniques you can use yep. for them. They're just about as easy as the perch, but you can go about a lot of different A lot ways. of different tangents you can go on with the shad, the different species of shad, different baits, fly fishing, conventional, light line, use them for cat bait, all that stuff. We'll get into that um, before the shad run. I am going to experiment with fly fish for yellow perch. They are usually typically on the bottom, so it's going to make it a little difficult. Um, I don't want to use a sinking line, so we're going to we're going to mess around with it. We didn't include it in this video just because I haven't tried it yet. Um, we're going to get to try it soon, and hopefully I'll get on some fish with it. So right, but like we said, we uh, we plan on having a big year. 2013 was good to both of us. Uh, I got my first ever musky in the kayak, which. Um, you can find it peelandragfishingtv.com or no, it's that's it's, that's it's the YouTube at channel. YouTube. Sorry, Peel and Drag Fishing TV at YouTube or on YouTube. Um, that's on there. We've got it on the website, which you're probably on right now. Um, right. So that's about it. I mean, that's the best at the moment. That's about the best video we've got. It's killer footage. Right. So. But we thank you for viewing. Uh, we hope we can keep all our stuff up to your liking. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, just hit us up. We're real active with right. it, so we'll be here to help. All right. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. See you on the water. All right.